Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. And if you're watching this video today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of my lecture notes that I had uh, when I was at university. So you can actually see what my maths lecture notes look like at university. So I'm sure some of you are probably thinking about perhaps if you're in year 12 watching this, maybe you're thinking about doing maths at university, or maybe if you're year 13 and you finished your A-level maths just recently in, in 2023 recently, um, you, you may be watching this thinking, you know, what could my lecture notes at university look like? Um, so I'm just going to go through some of my, I'm not going to go through the material and teaching the material, but I'm just going to show you what they look like. So you actually get a flavor of some of the notes that you could be, well, the, the structure of the notes that you may be getting at university, but I'm just going to make a disclaimer. Um, don't be intimidated. So, you know, you're not going to, obviously, I'm, you know, you're not going to understand everything you see. And I don't as well. I mean, I forgot the vast majority of the stuff that I'm going to show you, because as, as I mentioned in one of my videos recently, you, you learn so much information at university. It's like once you finish your exam, it's like you can just you just forget about it because you learn so much. It's like your brain can't store everything that you've learned. So don't be intimidated by it. You know, I'm sure if you you know, if you go back five years ago and you look at the maths that you were doing in A-level maths, you'd probably be looking at that thinking, what on earth is going on? So don't be intimidated. You know, this, you know, when you learn this stuff you will understand it once you are learning and once you know you you're asking for you know asking help seeking help you know doing your homework you you learn all this stuff when you study it basically but don't yeah don't be intimidated but let me just show you right now some examples of some of my lecture notes now do now I, i'm gonna say this i'm actually not sure if i'm allowed to do this i'm not sure if i'm actually allowed to like publish online some of the notes that i was um well, the notes that I was given as a student, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this. So I'm going to, you know, quickly scan through all this stuff without, you know, spending too long on each page. But I mean, this here is mechanics. So this here is um actually my first year mechanics lecture notes. So, you know, if you do maths at uni, you will be doing mechanics in your first year. I guarantee you that. Um, so this is what mechanics university first year maths lecture notes look like. Um, you know, as, as you can probably notice, very mathematical, um, you know, differentiate, you've got vectors. So when you when you deal with, you know, SUVAT in a university, you'll be dealing with vectors because, you know, everything goes to vectors now. Um, you've got your Newton's laws down here. What else we got? So we've got some dimensional analysis, which is just analyzing the dimensions of uh, your quantities, a uh, diff bit of differential equations. So, you know, in, in mechanics, you solve a lot of differential equations. Um, SUVAC kind of stuff, F equals MA, but again, lots of very mathematical. You know, you can, th so this here, what you notice here, that this is actually one of the SUVAC equations. So this is S equals UT. So, I mean, the V naught there is basically U, the initial speed. So V uh, half AT squared plus basically UT, and then plus the initial position. So this is stuff that you would have seen at A level, but it's just going through it in a lot more, um, we're basically without any numbers, um, very mathematical, very algebraic, lots and lots of letters, you know, some, an example here, a bit of SUVAT example, uh, SUVAT examples, um, you know, example with friction. So a bit of friction. So, I mean, it kind of goes through what you've already, you know, seen before, but it's just that you won't see many numbers. Uh, you will just see lots and lots of, lots of letters, equations, differential equations. So in this case here, we're actually solving a, a second order differential equation. Um, so if you've done further maths, you may know how to do this already. Um, but you go through all this kind of stuff, pulleys, but again, very, very mathematical. And, and you know, look at this here, you know, solving this equation here. So if you've done, if you've done some physics, you would have seen, um, you know, the spring equation when you've got like, you know, uh, Hooke's law, it's called Hooke's law, isn't it? So Hooke's law, um, you would have seen that before and you actually solve this mathematically as a differential equation, um, as a second order differential equation. So you can see here how they get the solution. This is how they get the solution here. So very, it looks very complicated, but again, when you, when you study this stuff, you know, you, you're taught this stuff in your lectures. So don't, don't get too worried. Um, it's just mechanics, but with a lot of maths, basically. So that's, you know, the first section of the mechanics lecture notes. So that's some of the, you know, an introduction to what you could be doing if you do mechanics. Um, well, if you do a maths degree, again, you'll certainly be doing mechanics and physics as well, of course. Uh, let's go to some pure maths lecture notes. So I've actually nicked, so these aren't actually my lecture notes. I didn't go to Cambridge. I wasn't that smart, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but I couldn't actually find my, I couldn't actually, well, I didn't save any of my pure maths 
lecture notes on my laptop. So unfortunately, I don't have access to any of my lecture notes that, that I had for pure maths. But linear algebra is an example of pure maths at university. So if you do maths at university, you'll probably do, well, you definitely do linear algebra in your first year. So that's pure maths. Uh, you also, you know, some proof, some analysis, real analysis. That's a massive pure maths topic at university. So I just thought it'd be good to show you some pure math stuff because obviously mechanics, that's applied maths. Um, let me just zoom in a little bit, actually. So linear algebra is all about these things called vector spaces and um, matrices as well. Lots of matrix stuff. So if, again, if you've done further maths, you'll know this stuff already. Um, they do. I mean, if you've not done further maths, they do very, very quickly skim through all the matrices and further math stuff you need but they do it very very fast which is why basically i'm doing these videos as i mentioned recently i'm, I'm doing these this like stem math series where i'm going to give you the maths that you'll find in a stem degree so i'm going to kind of you know go into a level maths topics in more detail to help prepare you for stem degrees and that's kind of one of the reasons why because they do go through you know the further math stuff if you do a math degree they go through that very 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 fast um so yeah you've got definition so this is what kind of what i was on about uh in my video six shocks of a math degree you know look at these lecture notes here so definitions they give you this definition very mathematical definition and you're looking you know you're probably looking at this thinking okay so a vector space over f to so a field f um so here they go. They're saying what a field is here. Um, and again, they're giving you a definition of what a field is. So, again, you're probably reading this thinking, you know, wow, you know, this is very um technical. Um, that is maths at university. Unfortunately, it's very technical, very, you know, um, very straight to the point, very mathematical, quite abstract. Um, again, your lecturers, you know, will go through more detail, obviously, in the lectures. They're not. Most of your lectures will not just copy out the notes on the whiteboard word for word. Uh, they will go through in a bit more detail and try and uh, give you some context to this kind of stuff. But your actual lecture notes that you use to revision look like this. So, you know, definition, they give you a big definition of what a vector space is here. So they actually tell you the definition. But again, very mathematical. Uh, they go for an example. So, again, you'll see this kind of repeating pattern in your notes definition example um so go for some examples lemma so lemma is just basically like a um it's basically like a small theorem it's just like a small result so you'll see this word lemma a lot in your lecture notes so a lemma is just basically a small it's just like a proposition it's just like a consequence of a definition basically so they go through basically a result here they say for, for all lambda in a field of a vector space, uh, lambda times by zero is zero for all vectors in this vector space and zero times by that vector is also zero. And they go through the proof. So again, you'll see this kind of definition, example, uh, propositional theorem, lemma, and then proof. So they go through how you prove these results here. So again, this is a, a repeating pattern, especially in pure maths. You know, again, here we go. The repeating pattern, definition, lemma, examples. And then there's probably going to be a, okay, so another one, we got another definition here of what a, what a base is or what bases are. Um, again, example, another one of these lemmas, another proof. And, oh, and, and also a point to mention as well, if you're a math student, <laughs> you'll see a lot of these in your lecture notes. You'll see a lot of proof oh, this proof is immediate from the definition. Oh, this proof is very simple. Oh, this proof is very trivial. You'll see a lot of that in your lecture notes as well. Um, <laughs> so again, it's, it's a common conversation that people have at university, you know, when they get their lecture notes and they get, you know, a proposition or a theorem like, you know, this here. And then in the proof section, it says, oh, well, this proof is really obvious. So I'm not going to prove it for you. Um, so <laughs> do be prepared for that. Um, because, yeah, you're probably looking at this thinking, well, like, how 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 is this obvious? You know, how is that immediate from the definition? So, again, you know, at university, this is where this is why it's important that if you don't understand something, you ask for help, because sometimes your lecture notes are not very helpful. Um, they will just say, oh, the proof of this is really obvious, um, even though it may not be obvious to you. So, you know, do ask for help if things don't make sense. Basically, is my point, you know, again very technical you know not a lot of words well i mean lots of words but just lots of mathematics you know not not a lot of real explanation and examples there are some examples but again these are very you know it's, it's very technical language very mathematical language um 
so you, you guys may be looking at things you know sorry let me repeat that again you guys may be looking at this thinking wow you know how am i going to cope again you know as i said before when you are looking at the work that you did uh if you go back in you know five years ago um and you look at like the stuff you've been learning in a level maths now again you'll be thinking the same thing so you know don't worry you learn this stuff you'll understand this stuff a lot of notation um, I'm getting a bit bored of this notation now. So I think I'm going to go on to the next set of lecture notes because, yeah, I hated pure maths at university. And you probably see why now I hated pure maths at university because it's very technical, very abstract. You can't visualize a lot of these stuff. And, you know, especially in pure maths, as I showed you with those lecture notes just there, um, you don't get many diagrams. It's, you know, words and letters everywhere. You can't visualize what's actually going on. So that's why a lot of students struggle with pure maths at university because, you know, the thing is applied maths, you can actually see in, you can actually visually see what you're doing, especially in mechanics, statistics, you've got an intuitive understanding of what statistics is all about. With vector spaces and group theory and ring theory, you know, it's very abstract, you can't visualize what you're doing, you just have to look at the letters and just, you know, do the problems and do the proofs. So, again, you know, that's why a lot of people, I would say that most people at university prefer applied maths. Um, so I think most people at A-level prefer pure maths, but at university, most people probably uh, prefer applied maths because you can actually visualize what you're doing, whereas you can't, you know, as I was showing you there with those kind of linear algebra um, things, you know, it's very hard to visualize. So this is some probability lecture notes. This is the first year probability that I did in my first year. Um, this is like a PowerPoint presentation. So some lecturers do PowerPoint presentations. Um, so again, they they give you, you know, sections, definitions. So again, the same kind of repeating pattern. They give you here a definition of what a random uh, experiment is, uh, a sample point, a sample space. Again, very technical, using lots of um, Greek letters. Um, they go for an example. So you've got an example. And again, probability is a little bit easier to understand because, again, it's applied maths. You can kind of see you can kind of visualize what probability is about because it's kind of intuitive to us what probability is about. Um, again, some more examples, remarks, um, combining events. So your set notation here, so go through a bit. So set notation, um, axioms of probability. So, you know, um, the kind of rules of probability, basically, these kind of like the three important rules, but again, very technical notation. But again, you get used to it. You do get used to it. Um, Let's just scroll down a bit further just so we can go to see so yeah, a bit of like intersection stuff and Venn diagram stuff. And so I'm going back to where we, we were. Um, yeah. Intersections, unions, Venn diagrams, lots of sum stuff. Um, yeah. I remember doing this here. I, I remember seeing this over the first time thinking, what the hell is this? Um, but it goes to some examples. You know, you do have examples, which is why, you know, even though a lot of your lectures are very, very, very boring, you have to try and keep engaged because they do go through important examples, which kind of help you visualize, you know, all, all this notation in your lecture notes. Um, then it goes through, you know, prob calculating probabilities. Um, uh, Pascal's triangle and N choose R. So if you've done your binomial distribution, you'll be aware of some of this stuff. NPR as well. You may not be aware of that one. So you've got NCR and you've also got this N. Uh, this NPR as well, um, which is about permutations. The permutation combinations are a little bit different, but, you know, th these notes go for all that. Uh, well, so we got, and let me just try and scroll down to the, um, to, we got binomial distribution. Yeah, so you got some binomial distribution, uh, a bit of binomial distribution. Um, I think I've probably gone too far for that. Yeah, a bit of binomial distribution, Bern uh, Bernoulli distributions, which is kind of like a binomial distribution, but when your n value is one, so like one trial, um, binomial distribution. So, you know, you go through that again, but again, quite fast because you've seen it before. Um, geometric distributions, um, some, prob uh, some properties of these distributions, expectations, which is basically the mean um of a random variable so it goes through how you find the mean of a binomial distribution so it actually proves to you so here it actually proves to you why the mean of a binomial distribution is n times p so you remember from your formula book in stats uh, n times p is uh the mean of a binomial distribution and it actually proves that so you get to see the proofs of where all these things come from um which you didn't do in a level maths uh the variance that goes through the variance of binomial distributions and all these kind of other distributions uh joint mass functions um 
again i remember finding these quite difficult to understand so again it's really important if you do struggle ask for help um let's try and go down to normal distribution um have gone down too far no let's go down a little bit further uh yeah, continuous distribution, so integration. So remember, with normal distribution, the area under your curve is your probability. So you actually get to practice that and do actually some integration where you actually integrate probability distributions and find areas. Um, probably skip normal distribution somewhere, haven't I? Or maybe it's the last section, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, you, you do lots of distribution stuff, lots of integration. Uh, central limit theorem... Uh, which is kind of uh, very important in probability, normal distribution. So yeah, th that just gives you a flavor of probability in your first year at maths at university. So let's just go to, um, let's go to these notes here. So this is a bit of statistics. So this is actually second year statistics stuff. Um, again, some universities you do statistics in your uh, first year some universities don't include statistics in your first year so it, de it depends on your university but i'd probably say that most do most make you do statistics so you know again it just goes to a bit of um detail about you know an introduction to stats and you know what stats is all about and you know estimators these things called estimators so if you do stats at university or if you do a statistics degree uh or if you do economics as well, you, you'll hear that this word estimator a lot. Estimates and estimators, which are slightly different things. Um, estimators are different to estimates. Uh, you would be doing a lot of computer programming stats. Um, so you'll be, you know, instead of, you know, drawing histograms on a piece of paper, you'll be, you know, getting your computer to do histograms for you. And also getting your computer to do hypothesis tests for you as well. Um, and programming computers to do that so a lot of computer work in stats as well um, which is different from a level and uh you know we got um you know continuous distribution so it goes through you know a lot of the probability stuff that we looked at before um variances um what's this here yeah so again very similar to actual pure math so look it goes through some definitions so we got not here we go again another definition there so it gives you the definition of what a um What's this definition? Yeah, so it actually gives you two definitions here. So the definition of a likelihood function. Um, so you'll look at the meaning of what a likelihood function is and also a log likelihood function as well, which, again, very important things in statistics at university. Um, and then look, here we go again. So it gives you a proposition. So here's a proposition for you. And then look, you've got to prove it. So they'll go through the proof in the lecture. So, again, some lecturers don't, you know, leave the proof section blank because um <laughs> they want to go for it in the lectures and it's kind of an incentive for you to turn up to the lectures now you can universities do recall the lectures but well, most do I'm, i mean i know that mine did so you can re-watch them but you know obviously it's just extra work catching up so you know again you, you are going to miss lectures no everyone misses lectures but try to minimize the amount of lectures you miss just because it's extra work for you guys and you don't want to have too much extra work and get too stressed so they do a lot of lectures do leave the proof section blank because they go for it in the lectures. So it's kind of an, an incentive for you to turn up to the lectures, but it proves this result here. And then, you know, the lecturer, he or she will go for how you prove that. Um, so again, it's the same kind of, re you know, repetitive structure of what maths lecture notes look like. So again, what you'll probably notice with this as well is stats is very, again, very technical, lots of technical um, letters and maths. And, you know, again, you get used to it, you know, after a month of doing maths at university you just get you you get used to it you do i promise you get used to this very technical language all the time and um yeah the, the more you practice with it the more you get used to it and again here we go you got a theorem you got a little remark here before the theorem and then he gives you um a big theorem and then what he's going to do is he's going to prove that to you in the lecture um again i'm probably not going to go for any more of this maybe let's go to the hypothesis testing stuff here so we've got a bit of hypothesis testing obviously stats stats is really all about hypothesis testing that's what it's all about so you go through what significance level is again the actual definition of that the power of a hypothesis test so again this is just to give you a little flavor of what you could be doing in stats again a lot of computer programming you know you'll be doing all these kind of graphs in your you know part of the computer programming element of statistics so normally in a statistics module there will be a proportion, which is coursework, which is computer programming stuff. So actually, you know, analyzing data 
doing hypothesis tests in so it's called r it's a, it's a software called r and you'll be programming in a language called r um r studios like the um the software that you use um it's test statistics and hypothesis tests and you know what's the most powerful test statistic what's the best test statistic to use for a hypothesis test you go through all this stuff so now i think i'm going to leave that now because again i think i've given you a good flavor of what statistics may look like let's go to these ones here uh, so this one is mathematical biology so normally a lot of universities offer this so let's just get a little flavor for what this is all about so again um you may be thinking looking at this thinking oh biology is going to be you know lots of um biology in this but there's not a lot of biology i mean obviously there's there's you know it's it's about biology but it's not about learning biology it's not about learning you know what a cell is and what is you know mitochondria and all that kind of stuff um it's it is mathematical it is, it is maths it is literally maths so it's maths applied to biology so you know you go for a bit of probability theory at the start um because probability and you know the probability of um i mean i can't remember to be honest but you know you look at the probability of dna and rna binding to certain receptors you look at you know the expectation the mean that kind of stuff discrete uh, probability continuous probability differential equations is a big one so if you look at chemical reactions so that's a big thing that you look at you look at the rate of change of a molecule uh, molecule in a chemical reaction which is differential equations so you'll be solving differential equations in mathematical biology again look at this you know in, you're not really seeing many biology diagrams like you'd see in a biology text but you're just seeing lots of maths and derivatives and differentiation and differential equations um it's interesting you know this was a very interesting module so it's definitely really interesting stuff and you go through some quite advanced stuff here Fourier series which is something that you'll probably study um in your second year I'd imagine at university you'll probably do Fourier series in your second year um quite again quite tough stuff you know partial differential equations not not easy stuff um but yeah th this is like a third year module normally mathematical biology this is normally a third year module or if you go to like you know cambridge oxford maybe doing your second year but generally speaking it's a third year module so you know this is you know if you're looking at this and you wow this is just too hard oh you get some diagrams here some nice diagrams um but uh yeah don't you know don't be intimidated because this is you know stuff that you could be doing maybe in two three years time so you know, go through some diagrams, just give you some visualization. So again, this is applied math. So, you know, the good thing about this is you can kind of visualize in real life what's going on rather than pure maths, which is just lots and lots of proofs about things that you can't think about. Um, differential equations and asymptotic solutions to differential equations and so all that kind of stuff. Um, I think we'll probably skip this now because i think i've given you a good flavor of all this kind of stuff manifolds and oh yeah i think we'll we'll move on uh let's go to the next set of lecture notes what are these ones about uh oh yeah this is kind of like second year mechanics so again a bit more mechanics you guys um so you've done newtonian mechanics and in your first year you'll do some more newtonian mechanics f equals ma that kind of stuff but if you especially if you're going to go into like quantum physics quantum mechanics you've got to learn this thing called lagrangian mechanics Again, if you do physics, you'll certainly be doing this as well. If you're doing a physics degree, um, so here we go a bit of, a bit more Newton's law f equals m a. But again, very technical in you know very precise mathematical terms. So again, you'll notice that mechanics, you know, at university, you know, not so many force diagrams as you did at A level. Not so many, you know, resolving forces and all. You know, have I got all my forces right? My force diagram, very mathematical. So if you didn't like doing that stuff, at, you know, A level, you didn't like your forces and your F equals MA and your, you know, your, your friction. Um, you, you do have to do that at university, but you don't really you can get away with, you know, you can kind of forget about doing lots and lots of diagrams because it could, becomes very mathematical. The principle of least action. So, again, you can see here lots of different um, derivatives, differential equations. So, you know, you kind of. You don't really have to worry about balancing all your forces because what you can do, especially in Lagrangian mechanics, is you can actually change the coordinates. So you know that, you know, in, in A-level maths and A-level mechanics, you use your normal coordinates, especially if you're doing like your I and J vectors. Let's say you've got a, a SUVAC question about, you know, using SUVAC in your I and J vectors. So you have to use, you know, if, if you're using I and J vectors, you're using your normal Cartesian uh coordinates so it kind of mentions this here actually uh you know cartesian coordinates um 
So you're using your X and Y axis or your Z axis if you're doing 3D stuff. What you can do in the Lagr uh, Lagrangian mechanics is you can do mechanics, but in any coordinates that you like, basically. So if you want to change, if you're instead of using X, Y, and Z as your coordinates to like tell you where you are on your grid, you can actually use diff any type of random coordinates you want to come up with so it could be like the distance you are away from the origin it could be the distance you are away from a certain other random point you like you can basically come up with any coordinates you like if you're doing like a you know a police question you can basically call one of your coordinates the length you are away from the pulley you can basically come up with any coordinate system you like to describe your problem and then you can solve these equations which tell you what your thing's going to do so i mean of course in mechanics you will have diagrams but it's less it's less you know drawing in your forces, making sure all your forces are balanced. It's much more mathematical. So I think you guys who maybe didn't like mechanics at A-level, I think you'll be surprised how much you like mechanics at uni because actually it's very mathematical, lots of differentiation, lots of integration, differential equations. I think you guys will like mechanics. I think a lot of people are surprised by how much they like mechanics at uni because, um, again, we've got this kind of block with friction kind of stuff. But you don't really have to worry about, you know, balancing your forces. You can just kind of use all these formulas and work out, you know, where it's going to move and what the acceleration is going to be, all that kind of stuff. You can do all this stuff using all this maths here. So if you do like your maths, you do like your differentiation, your integration, all that kind of stuff. I think you will enjoy mechanics because it's, you know, you know, less less force diagrams and less worrying about have I got the right forces? Um, I mean, there are some force diagrams here, but again, you don't really have to worry about it because it's all in the maths and it's all very precise and it's all very mathematical. So as long as you understand how to apply the formulas and how to do your differentiation, your integration, it's actually not too bad. Um, even though it does look hard, I'm, I'm sure you guys are thinking, wow, this is too hard. But again, when you do this stuff, you will, um, you'll get it. You'll get it. And the last set of lecture notes is going to show you what's this about. This is um numerical method. So this is kind of um so you know you guys, you you if you you you're year 13, if you've done your A levels, you'd have done a bit of Newton Raphson. So actually solving equations without using a method by hand, actually using like an algorithm, a step-by-step -step algorithm to approximate solutions. So that's what numerical methods is all about. So finding roots of equations, so a bit of matrices as well. Um so again, you can't really avoid these matrices in, in a, well, you won't in, evolve, uh, you won't avoid them in a maths degree. Uh, and also in economics, stats, you know, physics, you're not going to avoid these matrices. A bit of linear algebra, so a bit more pure maths in this, um, just to give you a bit more theory uh, as to what numerical methods, uh, as to how you can solve these, uh, basically solving simultaneous equations. So what this is all about in this first chapter of these lecture notes here is solving simultaneous equations um, without like using algebra, without using like, you know, rearranging your your your, uh, your letters and eliminating your variables. It's just using like matrices um, and using like a step-by-step -step algorithm in your matrices to solve your simultaneous equation. So it's quite a nice thing, actually. I think you guys may like this kind of stuff if you do. Well, I'm sure most of you guys will be studying this stuff if you do maths at university, numerical methods, and probably physics as well, especially if you're more interested in like the math side of things um lu uh, decomposition which is um useful again in this kind of stuff root finding for equations so the bisection methods we're kind of coming on to newton raphson actually so again you'll you'll redo newton raphson um where is newton? let me try and find newton raphson actually there we go here it's newton raphson so um you're looking at this and probably thinking wow this is much more advanced than what we did at a level uh, again i mean it's the same ideas as a level so don't you know if you are going to do maths at uni don't forget newton raphson um it's just that it goes into a bit more detail where the where the newton raphson formula actually comes from so you may have seen like a diagram kind of showing you where it comes from but this is kind of going through why this newton raphson is actually a good method to use and then it's kind of going through the, the order of convergence how fast newton raphson actually converges to a real solution the real solution of your equation um uh the convert yeah convergence to newton raphson method so proving how fast it converges so again a lot of proof in maths just in general even if you're doing applied or pure maths you can't avoid lots of proof uh again very technical proofs as well but again you know you you'll get used to it you get used to it um and then you go on to solving differential equations as well so using so not just um oh also some differentiation integration 
without you know using your standard method of you know bring the power to the front and then take away one from the power actually differentiating integrating tricky functions by using a step-by-step -step method similar to newton raphson but for differentiation and integration and obviously in integration you've seen a bit of numerical integration before you've seen um you've seen the trapezium rule so that's something you'll do as well you'll just go through that again but there's also other methods too um, you've got Romberg integration here. I can't remember doing that. Uh, common theme, I can't remember most of this stuff and I don't really want to remember most of this stuff. Um, and you've got at the end here some differential equations. So again, using these step-by-step -step algorithms to solve differential equations as well. Um, so I think I've, you know, labored the point a bit. I think I've gone through a lot of these notes now. So I think I'll probably call this a day uh call it a day now yeah so hopefully this you know this gives you a little flavor of what university maths may look like for you so um yeah i mean again don't be too intimidated you know it's um <laughs> this is university material but um i think it's nice that you guys can see you know a bit of a, a flavor for the you know how how a university maths degree looks like in your lecture notes um you know, the lecture notes are good for revision for these courses. So they're good, you know, once you've learned your material, just go over your lecture notes and your examples again. But, you know, your lecture notes do have gaps in them. Your lecture notes aren't precise. Some of the proofs they don't include. Um, so it is. it comes back to my point again. You know, if you need help, um, if you don't understand something, at university, no one's out looking for you. So you've got to ask for help if you do need help. You can't just, you know, wing it. Um, like you can probably get away with a GCSE and A-level maths, you can kind of just figure things out for yourself without asking for help. And if you fall behind, you can kind of catch up. It's very hard at university um, because when you get in lecture notes like this, and if you get a really bad lecturer, which is likely, you know, you probably, at least one of your lectures is not going to be very good te at teaching you this stuff. Um, you're going to have to seek out help if you do need it. But again, you know, hopefully this gives you a flavor of what you'll be doing. Don't get intimidated. Don't be worried. Any questions, do drop them in the, the comment section. Uh, but hopefully, yeah, this video was helpful and I'll see you guys all soon.